Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Pen Out Reports and I report on the unreported. So where am I today? Well I'm obviously by the seaside uh, but which seaside am I at? Well folks I'm at the beautiful Blackpool and I just absolutely love Blackpool. Look there's the tower, look at that, fantastic. <laughs> um, no I really do, I, I love Blackpool. It's it's always been like a magical place to me, guys, Blackpool. I used to come here as a wee child and I loved it then and I love it now. And to be honest, all Scottish people just seem to love Blackpool. It's like it's like a mecca for Scottish people. It's absolutely amazing. Um, I love everything about it. So today's story is from Blackpool. Fun fact about Blackpool, right? I found this out and I was quite, I thought it was quite fascinating, guys. But did you know the world's biggest stock of, stick of rock, you know, rock? It was, it was made here in Blackpool by the confectioner's Coronation Rock in 1991. And it was 19 feet long and it weighed 413.6 kilograms. And also, you know when you get a stock of rock and you can sometimes see the letters in it like I love Blackpool or Blackpool or whatever? Well, this was not invented in Blackpool. This was actually invented in Burnley, believe it or not. So, rock, it was originally just sold at fairgrounds back in the 19th century. But an ex-miner called Ben Bullock from Burnley, Burnley. He began manufacturing sticks of brightly coloured lettered candy at his Yorkshire based factory in 1887. Now Bullock, he sent his first batch of lettered rock to retailers here in Blackpool and it was well received. And so the seaside rock was born. So there you go, fun fact for you guys. Also, see the craftsmen who still make rock by hand, they're called sugar boilers by trade. And getting the lettering in the rock is a skill that can take up to 10 years to master. Gee whiz. So there you go guys, fun facts about Blackpool. Now look, look at this beautiful sea. And look, look, the tide is in. I never see the tide in, so I'm quite excited. Um, <laughs> anyway, guys, without further ado, let's get in to, the, to, the, to today's story. And if this is your first time around here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified of all my future videos. Let's do it, guys. Let's get on with today's story. This is the true story of Edward Rifle Mann, a 26 year old hard working man originally from Germany who drew to his own incredible bravery here on the sandy beach at Blackpool tragically lost his life breaking the heart of his then fiance who would hold a candle for her lover until her dying day. This is their story. When you think of Blackpool, you think of the Golden Mile, the Pleasure Beach, the Blackpool Illuminations, and of course, fish and chips. But in Victorian times, Blackpool was thought of for much simpler reasons. The seaside in Victorian times was a promoted remedy to escape the smog and oppression of the overwhelming and overpopulated mill towns of the day. So in 1833, the Factory Act gave workers only eight half-day holidays a year. So eight half days per year. They relished this. Each half day was taken full advantage of. And a decade later, when the new railways came into play, 
This meant thousands of ordinary people could easily reach the seaside. One of which lines connected to Blackpool's first ever train station that was built in 1846 on Talbot Road here in Blackpool. New Blackpool was transformed by the influx of visitors from all over Lancashire and beyond. Now Blackpool was becoming a fashionable town, a fashionable coastal town. Pleasure palaces sprang up to entertain the masses and new entertainments such as the music halls, winter gardens, variety shows, zoos and peddlers all touting for business all along the sands of Blackpool coast. The sandy beaches of the Victorian period were vastly different than today's standards. Back then, the beach would have been segregated into 50 metre sections, each section containing a single sex of people. So males in one section and females in another section and so on, you know. And it was simply uncouth for men and women to be seen in the same section of the beach and it was quite frankly frowned upon. Now believe it or not, up until the 1860s, men were allowed to bathe nude on the beach. Gee whiz! I mean, I don't mind a wee bit of skinny dipping, you know, but gee whiz! Um, so, anywho, but for women, it was a whole different story. Women had to protect their modesty at all costs. And so, to allow the discerning women of the Victorian period to enjoy a paddle in the sea, whilst at the same time protecting her, her modesty, the bathing machine was born. Bathing machines were wooden carts with two doors on either side of the front and the back which allowed bathers to change out of their clothes and into their bathing suit without having to be seen by the opposite sex. Society at the time conveniently decided that a woman, that a proper woman, should I say, should not be seen on the beach in her bathing suit. So the four-wheeled bathing machine would be rolled out to sea, usually pulled by a horse, but sometimes by human power. And it would be hauled back in when the lady of leisure signaled to the driver by raising a small flag that was attached to the roof. So when they've had a paddle and they're ready to come back, they would lift the, the wee flag up uh, and, and be hauled back in to shore. Some of these machines were equipped with a canvas tent lowered from the seaside door, so the door that faced the sea, giving the bather greater privacy as they descended into the murky waters of Blackpool Beach for a paddle. The Queen Victoria actually used a bathing machine when on holiday at the Isle of Wight. And in her diary on the 30th of July, 1847, she wrote, Drove down to the beach with my maid, and I went in to the bathing machine, where I undressed and bathed in the sea for the first time in my life. I thought it del delightful. That's what she said. No, no, no not all bathing machines were simple wooden shacks on wheels. Well, not in Blackpool, at least. As King Alfonso the Eighth, King Alfonso the Eighth from San Sebastian in Spain spared no expense when he had his bathing machine built. A fully mechanical palace on wheels. After all, a king couldn't be seen 
bearing with the riffraff. For Victorian men, the seaside offered an escape from decorum and respectability, and it offered prudent delights, especially here in good old Blackpool. Single men, safely out of the sight of their families, could spend their days at the beachfront, looking through the telescopes at women slipping into the sea from their bathing machines. And they would spend their nights visiting ladies of easy virtue. For the Victorian gentleman, Blackpool was a playground full of fun and fantasy but not for one gentleman, a Mr. Edward Rifle Mann. During the summer season of 1886, Edward Rifle Mann was a 26-year-old German nationalist, and he was employed on Blackpool Seafront right here by the Wilston Home Bathing Van Company. So he worked on the bathing machines, either by guiding the horses that pulled the van or by manually pushing the vans down to the sea edge. Just while the passengers were privately changing into their bathing suits inside the van, upholding their dignity of course, Edward would be pulling them down to the seafront down there and these vans would be lined up, hundreds of them. Now Edward was a young, strong and strapping man and he worked happily on the Blackpool beachfront, comfortably coping with the extreme manual labour required to haul the bathing machines up and down the beach all day. Relentless over the whole summer season for the vast amount of Victorian visitors looking to go for a dignified paddle. So young Edward, he would work here morning until night, day in, day out, saving every last penny that he could. For Edward had a goal, he had a target to achieve. He would soon be getting married to his fiancée, Helen. On the 1st of August in 1886, nearing the end of the day. The beachgoers were making their way back to their holiday homes, their hotels or their lodgings, just ready to enjoy the nightly delights of what Blackpool has to offer. Now back here on the beach, Edward, his boss Samuel Wilstenholm and Samuel's brother John Wilstenholm were packing up after another hard day's graft, when two young gentlemen jauntily walked across the beach heading towards Edward. The two gentlemen wanted to hire a bathing machine for the final dip of the day, but the tide had turned and the weather was becoming overcast and just not ideal for taking the bathing machine back out to sea. The two gentlemen, unable to be discouraged, and Edward being the hard-working and kind-hearted gentleman that he was, he reluctantly agreed. So he prepared the bathing machine and the two gentlemen boarded. Young Edward then dragged the bathing machine back out to the ocean edge, allowing the two gents to enjoy one last swim of the day. Now after a short while spent standing on the beach, Edward, he glanced out to the sea and although the sun was setting, it was, it was late in the evening and the soft golden light of the sun was shimmering upon the surface of the sea, he noticed the swimmers and some difficulty. The two gentlemen who previously boarded the bathing machine, they were in difficulty and they were quite a distance from the shore. With no thought for his own safety, 
the selfless and courageous Edward swiftly dove into the unforgiving waves in an attempt to rescue the pair. Bravely, Edward battled against the current and he managed to reach one of the gents. So he dragged them back to the safety of the sand. He then valiantly headed back out into the bitterly cold and strengthening waves. But the sea was relentless and the second man was swallowed by the undercurrent. The sea was truly unforgiving. Not only did the second gentleman disappear into the deep murky Blackpool ocean, but Edward, after fighting the roaring waves, desperately trying to rescue the second gentleman, he succumbed to the dominant and overpowering strength of the Irish Sea. Tragically, Edward lost his own life performing this courageous recovery and he too was drowned. With just two weeks left until he was due to marry his beloved Helen, her world had collapsed, her dreams shattered and her heart broken. Edward Rifleman was laid to rest in Leighton Cemetery here in Blackpool. News of his incredible bravery swept throughout the town and the townsfolk of Blackpool, they all came together and paid for this, his memorial stone, which is absolutely incredible. A truly noticeable memorial for a truly brave man. Now his memorial is also one of very few English gravestones that actually convey the story upon it of how the person died. So what happened to the heartbroken Helen, Edward's fiancé? Well, the owner of the bathing machine company where young Edward worked was called Samuel Wilstonholm. Samuel's brother was called John Wilstonholm. And John worked alongside Edward on the beaches of Blackpool, hauling the bathing machines up and down. And it was John who Helen went on to marry but Helen's first love, Edward, was never far from her thoughts. In fact, she continued to carry a torch for Edward throughout the rest of her life, even up to her dying day. Now, Helen would sadly die in 1903 after spending a long and relatively happy life with John. And by all accounts, John must have been a truly selfless guy, as the act he bestowed upon Helen just, be, just, it just goes to show the incredible nature and consideration of John. This shows what a true gentleman John was. As when Helen died, John arranged for Helen to be buried right here alongside her one true love, Edward Rifle Mann, reuniting the lovers at last. So although parted in life, Edward and Helen are forever reunited in death. So there you have it, a truly heartfelt tale of two lovers, though separated in life and reunited in death. This story just goes to show that even 
Helen moved on and married John. Her heart belonged to Edward. And the selfless and admirable John knew this. And without his own considerations, enabled Helen to be eternally reunited with her one true love. Absolutely incredible. So that's the story of Edward Rifle Mann, the gentleman who worked tirelessly and hard working as well on the beaches of Blackpool and sadly lost his life. But the people come together and they got him this memorial and he now lies here with his beloved Helen until death they did part. Absolutely fascinating. So guys, I brought a magical stone because we're going to give uh, Edward and Helen this magical stone from us to them. Okay guys, and we're just going to going to place that up on here. There we go folks, that's just there. So, I hope you enjoyed this guys. No murder and mayhem up for this story. Just true True love, true heartbreaking love. A story of two people and one, and in fact, three people, Edward, Helen, and the selfless John. What an absolute gentleman he must have been. To allow his wife to be buried here with the person she held a candle for throughout her entire life. Absolutely incredible. I've absolutely loved my day in Blackpool. It's been brilliant. And if you can get down to Leighton Cemetery, it is one of the most fascinating cemeteries I've ever seen. It's rammed with headstones. Just so you know, guys, over here, that's the front gate right there. And you can see the church behind me. So it gives you a bearing where to find this grave right here. If you want to come and visit Edward and Helen and pay your respects. So there you have it, folks. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. I really, really do appreciate every single one of you tuning in to watch my truly fascinating stories and historic wonders. So until next time, folks, you all take care and all the best.